for an issue that, frankly, a lot of people really didn't care about at that point. Next is seven memorial service today to honor a selfless San Diego icon. Two, one. Plus, history made as Blue Origin's new shepherd launches into space. We'll tell you all about it coming up. And the mass debate in schools hitting home as parents make their voices heard this morning. But it also comes as there's new guidance from doctors. You're up with News 8. This is News 8 Morning Extra. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Did you love that? How <laughs> fascinating was that? I, I was glued the entire time. Yeah, it has been a very eventful morning. Uh, you know, we had four people go into outer space uh, just moments ago. Uh, so it is quite incredible. Glad you're with us at 701 on this Tuesday. Thanks for being here. I'm Nadia Yaronpour. And uh, let's talk about what just happened. So minutes ago, billionaire Jeff Bezos made that historic first ever civilian flight to space with his brother, we had Wally Funk, and then an 18 year old. Here's yeah. a look. Two, one. Blast off into space. This was the exact moment that the first civilian space flight in history launched. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos rode an unpiloted rocket to the edge of space along with his brother and two others, like Netta just said. So they reached an altitude of more than, what, 340,000 feet, which mm -hmm. is considered to be the edge of the Earth's atmosphere, and then they came right back down. Yeah, so they went out. It's called the Von Karman line is technically mm -hmm. what the term is, and it's basically our way of determining where our atmosphere ends and outer space begins. So it's not exactly this precise spot. It's basically where the air is really, really thin. Yeah. So it takes a lot of effort to launch past that Von Karman line. But as you said, Stella, 340,000 feet above the Earth. And, and they had those windows, too, uh -huh. so they could look out and <laughs> see. Can't wait to actually hear from them I know. How, how it all felt. Yeah, when we were watching it live, the audio was a little crackly. You know, they're on a rocket ship they, going out They got to see space. the view of our planet. Very, <laughs> very cool. I got emotional. I got to be honest Yeah, with you. really. I mean, 66 miles. So 340,000 feet is 66 miles above Earth. And it was microgravity. That's what they were floating in for just a few seconds. It's, and then they landed back to the desert. That's there in Texas. Uh, Vaughn Van Horn is this small town in Texas, West Texas, where all of this happened. Uh, and, you know, there's the youngest and oldest people ever to go to space. That's what we just witnessed here. Wally Funk at 82, Oliver at 18. Nonetheless, a historic moment, and they got to see our Earth from just a mm -hmm. very different vantage point. Not many people get to do, but <laughs> uh, as we heard on CBS that, uh, you know, maybe by 2027, they're projecting space tourism to uh, be a thing of the wow. future, although it is going to cost a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, it would cost a lot, at 200 to $250,000 for us regular folks to book a flight. But what, there's 600 people waiting to do that right, right. now. The thing that <laughs> so, was going through my mind is this youngest person, okay, so this 18-year-old. Yeah. How do you top that? Like, what's what, what next for mm -hmm. you in life? There is, like, what else could be more exciting, right? Yeah. He's going to go off to college, a maybe prom. He, has he gone to prom yet? We don't yeah. know. I mean, he's a physics student, he's right? So okay. Yeah. He's he's definitely uh, you know, the start of his life is very uh eventful. So I don't know how you top it, but uh let's also bring you back to earth and show you what's going on here in San Diego right now. You see some clouds. This is the view from Cardiff State Beach. There are a few surfers out in the water. They do have to swim pretty far back out there uh, to try to catch those waves and some clouds. That's all we're noticing. Let's also show you uh what it looks like from one of our other mountain camera shots. Our weather graphics have it for you. San Miguel camera as you see out towards the west very clear across a lot of the south bay so our marine layer this morning pretty much non-existent here's an east facing camera on san miguel mountain as well where you see that sun coming up and your weather headlines include that monsoonal flow throughout this week but today and tomorrow not as big of a chance thursday friday thunderstorms may increase for the mountains and deserts this weekend we will cool down a bit it's still hot and humid though for the next few days and let's check in with jenny now what's happening at ground level i know <laughs> <laughs> why do i even want to tell you what's happening here we're all concentrated on what was happening up there
Hey, 705, and yeah, it got a little bit busier just with your travel times. We've got a little bit of an uptick, but crash-wise, I'm not seeing anything major. Coronado Bridge, westbound, right at the 5, there is a stalled car, so it is blocking that second lane. You know that can cause a little bit of a headache, so tiny delay associated with that. Speaking of delays, here's that northbound 805 crossing the 94 all the way towards the 163, 19 miles an hour on average. Not a bad delay, but yeah, you're going to slow down just a little bit. 15, Tierra Santa Boulevard heading southbound on the median. There is a stalled car. Travel times are fine. Travel times to the North County look okay. I only see a buildup west on the 78 from the 15. No crashes reported. Jenny, thank you. A heavy police presence in Chicano Park overnight where a homicide investigation is currently underway. Let's show you what happened there. A large crowd was already gathered when police arrived, although it's unclear at this time why that crowd was there. You see some tensions, though, as police officers were there. Tensions escalated. They tried to disperse the crowd. We're being told this is a homicide investigation, but right now, we don't have any word on suspects, the victim, what happened there exactly. So Chicano Park overnight hours uh, became the scene of, you know, several officers, but also that crowd. We're going to update you as soon as we get more information from police. And a San Diego, San Diego police still looking for the person responsible for a deadly shooting in the gas lamp. This happened around 2 yesterday morning at Island and 5th. Police saying a man was shot during an argument between two groups of people. Witnesses saying that the shooter got into a car with at least two others, then drove away. A description of the suspect not provided yet. Well, he has helped homeless individuals and families all over San Diego for many, many years. And this morning, San Diegans will come together to remember Father Joe Carroll during a memorial service. And News 8's Evan Durrani is joining us live outside St. Rita's Catholic Church. That's where the service will take place. What are the details for this day, Evan? Good morning to you, Netta and Stella. That is right. We just got a copy of the program for this service, and uh, it includes a picture of Father Joe there on the front, ordained to the priesthood June 28, 1974, more than 45 years ago. Uh, just a celebration of his life here at St. Rita's expected to take place just around 10 o'clock this morning, and people are starting to come in for that daily service that takes place at St. Rita's. But again, it is expected to be a very full house as 10 o'clock approaches. Now, uh, News 8 was able to speak with many of the family and friends of Father Joe about the legacy that he left and about the memory uh, of uh, just the friendship and kindness that he expressed. Take a listen. A lesson from, the, the, from Father Joe would be to everybody out there when you encounter a homeless person is to you know, at least say hello, say good morning, wave to them, do something, and remember that they're a human Iconic San Diego priest and advocate for the homeless, Father Joe, died on July 11th at the age of 80 after a battle with diabetes. Carol was president and CEO of the St. Vincent de Paul Village from 1982 until his retirement in 2011. It was renamed in his honor to Father Joe's Villages in 2015. His namesake organization has assisted thousands of homeless residents in finding shelter, medical assistance, child care, housing, and other resources since he took over over nearly 40 years ago. San Diego Bishop Robert McElroy will preside over the service today. He's expected to be here in attendance and there are expected to be hundreds of people here as well. Now, if you'd like to attend, this event is open to the public at 10 a.m. However, if you want to stream it, you can head over to our website. That's cbs8.com. You can tune into the live stream and watch that service remotely. That'll be taking place here at St. Rita's in the Lincoln Park area. Uh, for now, I'll send things back to you, uh, Netta and Stella. All right, Evan, thank you very much for that update, and we'll see you soon as well. Uh, the debate now picking up over masks at schools. There's new guidance coming in from the American Association of Pediatrics on whether kids should wear masks when school starts back up. For many of them, fall semester's coming soon. Uh, this comes as the debate is hitting home this morning. News 8's Allison Royal is live in Poway, and that's where a group of parents are planning to hold a rally. Good morning to you, Allison.
Hey, good morning. So this is a big talker with parents. I'm sure you two can attest to that. So the American Academy of Pediatrics came out with this recommendation recommending that children two and older wear a mask regardless of vaccination status as well as adults. So there's going to be a group of parents from Let Them Breathe later on this morning. They're going to be gathering here in Poway to say, hey, this should be up to parents, not the government. Uh, what we're seeing is the person that got vaccinated is home with mild illness and other family members that are not vaccinated are in the hospital potentially with more severe illness or even in the intensive care unit. What parents need to know is... So I want to give you a little bit of background about what we're talking about. So different organizations have different guidance when it comes to kids wearing masks at schools, which can be confusing for parents, understandably. So the World Health Organization does not recommend kids five or younger wear masks and does not believe anyone should wear one while they are exercising. And we all know how much physical activity children are capable of. The CDC, however, said students should wear a mask indoors inside the classroom, but can take it off when they're outdoors. And then let's take a look at a state level. The California Department of Public Health said ultimately it is up to schools and school districts to decide how they'll enforce indoor mask wearing. So let them breathe is that group I just talked about. It's a group of parents. There's over 12,000 of them all over the country and they are organizing quite a few rallies today here in San Diego County calling for masks to be optional for children in schools. Some parents are arguing that masks do more harm than good and have also pointed out that in San Diego County children have been largely unaffected by COVID-19 deaths. So I'm going to bring you back out here. This one here in Poway is going to start at 8 o'clock this morning. And we're going to be there for that. There are also going to be rallies today in Oceanside, Carlsbad and Valley Center, among others. Also CNT. So it's definitely going to be a big countywide movement. And we're going to see how school districts respond as we get closer and closer to that school start date in just a little bit over a month for most schools. So I'm going to send it back to you too. All right, Allison, thanks. And yes, Sweetwater starting tomorrow. So some districts are earlier than others. Uh, we will have those details coming up. And here's a look right now as we take you to our beach. Look how pretty that is. We have the marine layer, but it's just right there along the five, west of the five mainly, not noticing it getting far inland at all. So that's a good sign. It means that, you know, the sun will be out for most of us today. It also does mean that uh, things will be warm. It'll get warm pretty quickly. You may notice if you step outside, not as humid as yesterday yesterday or a Sunday, but starting to see more moisture popping up here right along the California Arizona border and then right here along the Mexico border as well. So this is moving towards the west as you see that east to west flow. It's starting to pick up. So right there by Mexicali uh, between Brawley and Yuma, uh, you know, these are a lot of farmland areas where uh, right now looks like they're getting some rainfall. Most of this where it's darker green, the yellows and the reds, that's where it's hitting the ground a lot of that lighter green it's verga it's evaporating before it does that but that's all monsoonal moisture so it's just to the east of our desert uh, you know there's a chance throughout the morning we'll watch it and see if it gets any closer to us by this afternoon mountains and deserts that likelihood of thunderstorms is still in the forecast uh, but it's it's not as calm or as a uh, likely, I should say, as what we saw perhaps on Sunday. So we'll see what happens. Uh, it all depends on what's going on with that moisture. 65 degrees in Poway, 72 right now for downtown. You're at 70 in Chula Vista, 85 for Borrego, low 70s in Julian and Mount Laguna. That 24 hour temperature change a little bit cooler for some spots. Nothing too crazy, though. No big changes. Here's a look at the dew points where you see the 50s and the 60s. And let's show you now what the next eight days will bring around the coast will be pretty warm around around 80 to upper 70s through Friday, low 90s for inland valleys dropping into the 80s by this weekend.